Has it, is that? I'm just going to ask you: Is that real life background, or is yeah. that? Is that that's sort of like? <laughs> <laughs> Could you not see all the tourists behind no, me? I can, yeah, yeah. But you know, when you get these sort of really impressive like uh, green screens, and oh things, yeah. Like, that's definitely it's like going to blur out. It's going to blur out. <laughs> no, no, not, that's really impressive. No, the elephant in the room. I really like that. I really like that a lot. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Um, and there's one right behind you, actually, as as we speak as well. Um, gr- grief, losing people. It's something that everybody experiences, but we all experience it in a slightly different way and at different times of our lives, which means that. We never quite sync up, do we, in terms of how we feel and how we share those conversations. And that must be something that you've experienced throughout what you've been through um, and, the, the, and, and, the, and the way that people have interacted with you about it. Yeah, you know, literally I'm sat at Tower Bridge in front of an elephant in the room because it is the elephant in the room. People don't want to talk about grief. They don't want to talk about loss. People used to cross the street when Tom first passed away because they couldn't actually approach the conversation about Tom dying. And for me, I wanted to talk to these people. I wanted to celebrate Tom. But I just think as a nation, we are awful at talking about grief, about death, about loss, because I think we're all so worried that you might say the wrong thing, but there's no wrong or right way to approach it, or there's no wrong or right thing to say. What's that like that? The sort of the, when you can see, that people are deliberately avoiding you. I don't think through malice or anything like that, but they always just think it's just easier not to say anything. If people think it's easier to say like nothing than just be like, hi, how are you? I'm really sorry for your loss. Like saying I'm sorry for your loss is not going to get anyone's back up. Like, you know, then that opens that conversation to say, don't be sorry. Like I had a wonderful life with Tom. It was cut too soon and too short, but you know, we had an amazing, amazing 13 years together. And I want to talk about Tom and he's the father of my children. Do you think in terms of that process that you're going through, maybe what were those sorts of feelings and emotions that you were having during that time that you wanted to share? Were there things that you wanted to say about what you were going through? Well, I did also want to say to people, like, this is the one thing we're all guaranteed in this lifetime is we're all going to die. So let's just talk about it because we are all actually going to die. This 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 survey has found that fifty eight percent of people consider death to be a taboo subject, and yet it's the only inevitability that we have in life. You sometimes hear, don't it's you, the about one like thing we know that's going to happen. <laughs> like anything else, you don't know if you're going to keep your job for the next ten years, but you ultimately know that you are going to die at some point. You hear, don't you? There's the movie Coco, where you know they sort of focuses on like Mexicans and Mex- in Mexico they seem to have this thing where they 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 have like celebrations of death and the fact that people have have died as well. And to me, that feels like a really big cultural leap. But we could make that leap if we chose to. We almost rather we we'd almost sort of sit back and kind of do things our own way because because if you mention it, people think you're a bit strange or that. Well, why do you want to celebrate something which is sad? Yeah, and it's like that we've sort of, especially here in the UK, we have got that like stiff upper lip, haven't we? Even just how like me, you know, I'm 33 and a widow. It's like how we think a widow should look like and and behave. And, and, you know, I didn't think I was going to be a widow at 33. I didn't think I'd be here talking about grief and loss at 33, but I am. So we do just need to embrace that conversation and and have the celebrations. Like even for me, like Tom's funeral... I was like, I wanted, like, you know, my, one of my notes and it was wear, wear some sparkle. Like, let's jazz it up a bit because let's celebrate his life. This is not a day to mourn him. Let's celebrate him. In terms of your experience, Kelsey, and the sort of the, the emotions that you felt, I heard a, a quote which really struck with me about loss was that um, grief, grief is love that has nowhere to go which always struck me as quite a a good way of almost explaining what grief was. And I felt like in hearing that, it made made a little bit more sense to me about why grief matters and actually why grief happens. And actually it isn't something that we should be necessarily scared of because it's a representation of the love you feel for somebody. Yeah, and it is the price you pay for loving that person. Like, that is it. And I think people... Like you, they go. Oh, you know, after the funeral, it will hit them. It, it will hit them. And I, I used to always say it hit me the day he died, and I've, I've never felt. You know, I'm never going to feel the same. But you know, my grief hasn't got any smaller. It's got no bigger. You learn to live around your grief. Like it doesn't all of a sudden go. You know, one day I'm going to wake up and go, "Who was Tom?" Like you learn to live 
with that, that's going to be with me till the day I die. But I'm learning to live around my grief now. Obviously, you guys have got uh, so many sort of memories and Tom's legacies, you know, he's clear, clear for all to see. What for you is it like that the, phys- the physically he's not there anymore? The, 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 the physicality of him in the house or in the even when you reach over in the in the bed in the morning. How, how, what is that? What's that like? How do you, how, how, how can you can you is he able to put that into words? What that difference is? No, it is really hard to put into words. You just miss their presence. And I miss Tom so much being in the house and, you know, coming in. Oh, you know, he used to always come out of his best ideas in the shower and come out and be like, oh, I've got I've got an invention. I've got an idea. Like you miss them little things about that person. But that's why we should talk about it, because I want to celebrate him and I want to talk about him. I spoke to Max from the band after Tom's passing and uh, obviously Max was absolutely devastated. And it, it struck me as well, though, in terms of the things that people were saying to him and Max has had his own issues around sort of his mental health and things like that it was really open and honest. But it, it struck me as well that when somebody who is a high profile passes, that there's people think they know that person or they know a version of that person. But then obviously you see that very, very personal side of, you know, it's just it's just him. It's not the pop star. It's not the guy, you know, the, the posters on the wall and all. There was a quote from, uh, it was um, one of Julian, uh, sorry, it was one of John Lennon's kids. Yeah. And he was saying that people would come up to me and go, your dad meant everything to me. Your dad was the best thing that ever happened. He's the most important person in my life. And, and, and he was going, hang on a minute. Like, I appreciate you're a fan of my dad's music, but like, he was the he was the guy who literally put food in my mouth, and he was saying that he couldn't quite get his head around that difference between people's thoughts and memories of a of a of someone on a stage, or if you like, versus that very real sort of sense of that as well. You must get that mix when people come and talk to you about yeah. Tom and, and their memories so, of it. But I just I do love people talking about him. So in the interview before, the lady told me a story about Tom going in and making a massive fuss about um, her dog. And I was like, I want to hear things like that. But I know what you mean. It's like the Tom I had at home was the completely different Tom to other, that other people saw. But I'm just willing to like embrace, you know, stories about both both Toms. I, I was, think as well as when someone passes, you sort of put them on the pedestal as well, that they were like a saint. But I'm like, no, 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 Tom did have faults as well. Like we've all got faults in life. It's, it's, it's. It is that talking about him, and people go, oh, "I didn't know he did that." Yep, he did do that. When when people talk about and the survey results come out, uh, the, the thing about the idea of, of people have a fear of saying the wrong thing. Did anyone say the wrong thing? Do you have experience with that? No, no one's ever said anything wrong to me. But it's how they start with, "I'm sorry." It's like, don't be sorry. Don't be sorry about talking about that person that I loved. Like, let's talk about him. In, in terms of Tom and obviously being ill and, and and you obviously saw various different stages of that as time has passed and it's only a very short period of time you yeah. know you know that that 18 month period of time does that change the way that you think of him or how you remember him as it as, as sort of the the time scale shifted if you like to allow you to place yourself in different parts of your life with him there is it's so weird when you lose someone like for me it feels like it was only yesterday but then it feels so long since I last saw him so I think you just shift through the emotions and I think it's definitely the the conversations you're having like I might be talking about the birth of the children and I'm like oh Tom did this and it was so funny like you sort of jump through the stages of his life and with that in mind do you find that there's almost there's still that presence there that although it's you know it's it's memories from the past that you feel like somebody's with you on that journey or, the, or their, their legacy stays with you yeah I definitely think as well for me having the children because you know Tom's still very present in the house he's like belongings are still there and we've got pictures everywhere of him so and, and especially with the kids I want to keep his memory alive so we do talk about him every single day when, when the kids do something that's very Tom when okay. you see do You're you just see like it? your dad do, but do, do you there must be, and I've not had experience of that, but there must be a thing where you go, oh, there he, there he is. Like, that's him right there. And it might be a look or it might be a phrase or something like that. Is that something yeah. you recognise? And I do think it's going to be interesting with them growing up because it's going to be nature or nurture. Like, what is actually Tom born within them? And Bodie's definitely his stubbornness. He just, like, strops off and that is so Tom. 
and in terms of that conversation, we talk about grief with with the, with the kids as well. Is that is it is making sort of dad part of everyday conversation the way that you normalize and help them deal with the fact that the, 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 he's physically not there? Yeah, and you know, it, my little girl's just started school, and I've had to say to her, you know, other people in your class are going to have mummies and daddies, and you just need to be honest and say that your dad's not here and why he died, and don't ever be a sh- like ashamed or afraid to say that but she she almost is the elephant in the room because they're so young um she'll just say to people oh my did you know my dad's dead and people go like oh i don't want to talk about this and she go yeah i just died from brain tumor and especially when the queen died she'd be like you know my my dad and the queen are together they're up in the sky together like it just it and it made it easy because we've been so open about them conversations it made it easier when the queen died when we lost my granddad for them to understand what death is and what it looks like because where tom went away so much i think they thought he was going to come back and i was like daddy's not coming back sure sure and i think that when the queen died we had this period of mourning didn't we where we almost get we gave ourselves permission to sort of grieved didn't we almost like a two-week period of course you don't often get that a lot of people you know somebody somebody dies you know you take the afternoon off and then you get the day off for the funeral and then you're sort of yeah. back into life and it's expected i can ask you just in terms of taboos as well you used the phrase before about a, a widow i just wonder when you were growing up when you thought of what a widow looked like or your perceptions of that one as well i wonder if that sort of changed now you use that sort of language yourself now um where is actually that sort of almost feels like an old Victorian way of describing somebody who's lost someone, but then it, it, it can be a modern and, and appropriate thing as well for, for, for the modern day. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a weird word, isn't it? Widow. It's like I'm 33 and I'm a widow. Like it's maybe that word needs to be changed, but Hey, that's a different topic, isn't it? Um, but uh, yeah, it's just, I never saw myself here. And you do think of a widow as like a lady in their eighties, 70s 80s have lost the husband and and in mourning and now you see me in a pink jumpsuit at 33 being a widow and when people sort of talk about tom do they ever ask you how are you and i'll ask you the question now you know how how are you how, how do you how are you getting on on just that day to day i just think you learn to li- like live with your grief so you know for me it's about just pushing forward and living each day because you know, Tom said this, we're not promised tomorrow. So live each day and enjoy every moment. And I always say to people, I'm like, it's just not that deep. It's not that deep. Don't worry about them little niggles in life. That's great advice. Kelsey, uh, Kelsey, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. I'm going to get some pictures up online as well so people can check out the uh, the elephant in the room or the elephant by uh, Tower Bridge as well. Thank you so much for speaking to us. We wish you all the best and speak to you soon.